Welcome into the OT pregame show as we get you ready for the homecoming football game between the NAU Lumberjacks and the Cal Poly Mustangs. I'm Matthew Jarecki and I'm joined by Michaela Palladino. Michaela, NAU looking to bounce back after a rough week last week and Cal Poly looking to run roughshod over an NAU defense. It's been up and down this year. Well, Matt, Cal Poly comes in having won only two games overall this year. They're one and three in conference. They're desperate to right the ship because with four conference losses, playoff bids and biggest guy championships are extremely difficult to come by. And the last four games for this team, they're one and three with their losses coming by an average of 38 points. So NAU does look to have the advantage in this one, but we thought that last week too, Matt. That's right. We thought that last week. And, and speaking of last week, Michaela, I heard somebody close to the program say it might be the worst loss they've ever seen by NAU football. The hope was there, the Big Sky Championship goal was in sight, NAU had momentum coming off, a huge win versus Weber State at home. They had the bye week to prepare, but what did they do? They gave up 42 points to Northern Colorado on the road, the worst team in the Big Sky up to that point, and it was ugly all the way around. Right before the matchup, we got news that Daniel Bridgegad, the starting quarterback, had been suspended for missing practice earlier in the week. We didn't know how long that suspension would be, and it turned out Gino Campiotti, freshman backup, he would start the entire first half, the end of the game, with just 132 passing yards, three interceptions, but perhaps the biggest storyline of the game, Daniel Bridgegad entered for... Campiotti in the third quarter almost immediately injured his knee and he is now questionable in a must win game this weekend for NAU. You see him here. He's been more than effective since filling in for Case Cookus. That's a big loss for NAU. But whether it's Bridge Gad or whether it's Gino Campiotti, NAU knows this. they need this win desperately to stay alive in the big sky. And you look here, look at the standings. UC Davis 4-0, Eastern Washington 3-1, Weber State 3-1. There's teams with 3-1 and one records and a 4-0 and oh record right on top. And you see NAU all the way down when we get to the 7th place in the state. Look, NAU tied for 7th place right now, Idaho Cal Poly. So, Michaela, it's been a tale of two identities for this NAU team. One very good at home and one not so good on the road. Take us through that. That's right. Take a look at NAU's remaining schedule here. And you can see they started off well on the road versus UTEP. Lost at home to Eastern Washington when Cookus went down, but from there, the inconsistency began. Huge loss on the road to Missouri State. A quality win at home versus Southern Utah. Then they go on the road and give up 56 to Idaho State. Then a bounce back win versus a very good Weber State team. And like clockwork, last weekend, a very disappointing loss to Northern Colorado. Well, you said it, Michaela. And to find out what's going on with this team, we caught up with a guy who might have a better feel for the Lumberjacks than anybody outside the actual coaches and the players. NAU TV's Mitch Stroman will be on the call today. What happened last week? Well, it just wasn't a very good game for the Lumberjacks. There's, there's no way to, to get around that, Matthew. Um, the team did not play well in any phase of the game, offense, defense, special teams. I think Northern Colorado came out highly motivated. They were big underdogs at home. They were playing without 12 of their best players, several starters, because of a suspension issue, curfew violations the previous week. And I think they rallied the, their, their troops. They circled their wagons, Northern Colorado did. And you got to give them credit. You have to, to acknowledge that here was a team that was 0-7 on the season playing without 12 of their best players, and they came right out of the gate and took it to the Lumberjacks. Cal Poly's coming in, mm -hmm. and they run the triple option. You've seen it many times before having broadcast these games. What should fans expect to see? Well, expect to see a lot of rushing. Uh, they, Cal Poly will throw the football on occasion, but they are far better at running the football than they are at passing the football. That's just the nature of the triple option. Uh, they're one of the top teams in the country in rushing yardage per game. And they have, I think, a, a potential NFL prospect in Joe Prothro, uh, who is a sixth year senior. He actually gray shirted his first year. So technically this is his sixth year associated with the program, uh, who's battled some injuries. He was out most of last year with injuries, but he is a a legitimate prospect at fullback for the NFL. 
just a tremendously gifted athlete. What did you see from Campiotti, who is a freshman, uh -huh. and how do you expect, if he has to start this weekend, how do you expect NAU's offense to look different? A true freshman, even. Uh, he doesn't even have that redshirt year of being in the program. Uh, what I saw in, in Gino was what I've seen in practice with him leading up to last week's game. He's really, really good on the run. He can run the football very well with his feet, get out of trouble, gain positive yardage when the pocket breaks down. I think he's still learning the, the system, and he's still learning the timing. Homecoming weekend, what are you expecting the atmosphere to be like in the Sky Dome, having experienced this? Well, I hope it's electric. Uh, homecoming is always special, especially for alumni to, to get back to Flagstaff and, and see their alma mater. Homecoming parade during the morning, um, you know, an honor for me once again to announce that parade on, on the North Campus. Uh, there's so much in the way of activities going on for alumni and also for, for current students. You, you've broadcasted some pretty good big games before. Mm -hmm. Can you just describe the feeling knowing that this is an important game and the Sky Dome's going to be packed and you're right on top of it all? I love it. I can't, I can't think of a better way to spend my Saturday, honestly. Um, whether it's at home or on the road, I love spending my Saturdays with, with the Lumberjack football team. It's, it's part of what makes my life the fun life that it is. That one, and it's picked off. Near side of the field, 35, weaving his way back to the middle. Inside the 20, he's going to take it to the house. Cameron Johnson, pick six, touchdown. When I talked to Mitch, he was so excited about broadcasting another homecoming weekend event. And NAU's been really good on homecoming days. Let's, let's take a look at this graphic here. You look at the past, you know, 2017, 16, 15, 14, 13, they won all those games. That's kind of a trademark, by the way, of the Jerome Sowers era for this NAU football team. They've been very good at home, especially, as you see, on homecoming weekend. Now, what does NAU need to do to continue their success on homecoming weekend? Well, why don't we go straight to the source and ask defensive coordinator Andy Thompson, how do you prepare for the triple option? We spent some time in the last spring doing it, um, so it's not the first time our guys have understand what that concept is. And uh, you still got to do what you do every week. You got to tackle, you got to get off blocks, and you got to cover. So um, just putting your eyes in the right spot is, is really a key factor um, to trying to stop it. And they can certainly play tricks on your eyes with that triple option. But they have a guy, Joe Prothero. I asked Andy Thompson, how do you bring down a 230-pound fullback that leads the big sky in yards? Got to, got to tackle low. You got to try to go low. Uh, you can't, can't stay up high on a guy that's bigger than you. Um, and so we got to try to go get into his legs. We got to try to get him started, you know, stopped at the line of scrimmage before he gets going five yards down the field. Um, so it'll take all 11 guys working together. And, and uh, it's a great challenge. But every week in our conference, um, is a challenge, so got to keep it going. Matt, it's really nice to hear to hear Coach Thompson talk about the need to cut in practice this week. Those are details that you look for out of a coaching staff. Those are absolutely some of the details. I mean, you know, something we talked about a lot, me and Andy Thompson, off the record. He's adamant in order to get a guy like Joe Prothero uh, down to the ground, those are the types of things NAU needs to do. Prothero, of course, comes in leading the big sky in rushing with 935 yards. He's an absolute unit. He's 230 pounds, listed as a fullback. He's the player NAU needs to watch in this game. He's the player you need to watch in this game. And you know what? Let's go ahead and look at some examples of how NAU might try to stop Joe Prothero this week. So we're looking at a game about a month ago versus Southern Utah. NAU did a good job at the beginning of this game stopping the run. You'll see it here. Quarterback hands it off to the running back, Felia. Look how everybody rushes up to the line. And actually, it's Maurice Davison, a cornerback, making the tackle. That's going to be a key to stopping the run. Here's another one. On this play, number 31, Brandon Worthy knocks the ball out right there. You'll see it. And we're going to take a look at this thing in slow motion. This is going to be one of the keys for NAU versus Cal Poly. NAU needs to knock the ball out of the runner's hand. It's the only way NAU is going to get turnovers. Look at this. 
31. Brandon Worthy just reaches his hand in, goes for the ball while making the tackle. That's going to be critical for NAU's defense. All right, last one we're looking at. You can see here the linebackers a little bit hesitant as the running back gets the carry. They're not sure if it's pass or run, but look at this. Number 50, Chris Jewell gets off a block, gets in there, and tackles low. That's exactly what Andy Thompson wants to see out of his defenders today. And, and we just saw how NAU could possibly stop Joe Prothrow, the big fullback that leads the country in yards. But there's more than that to this Cal Poly offense, isn't there? That's right. They have two more players that are in particular. First off is Khalid Jenkins. He's the quarterback for this team, 6'2", 215 pounds. He's gained 339 yards on the ground so far. He's gaining 56 yards per game. He's Cal's Poly's second most dangerous running threat, and he is a running threat first and foremost. Only 45 passing attempts on the year. That shows you what kind of offense we're going to see today. And the next guy to look out for, J.J. Koski. Like I said, this team isn't going to throw much, but when they do, it'll be to Koski. 6'2", 200 pounds, averaging 17 yards a catch this year. Every once in a while, the Mustangs wait for the defense to sell out on the run, sneak Koski behind the defense, and he'll run away with the big catch. He's also a very good punter. For that he is. He's somebody NAU will need to watch out for. And a couple players for Cal Poly to watch out for, starting off with number one, Emmanuel Butler for NAU. He'd already broken NAU's all-time touchdown record earlier this year, but as if that wasn't enough, he goes on to break the all-time receiving yards record last week in that loss to Northern Colorado. He's 6'4", 220. He can take the top off a of defense. He's got NFL scouts looking at him every week. And, and here's the key. NAU could be starting a true freshman quarterback, Gino Campiotti. If they are, a big target like Emmanuel Butler can help a young, growing quarterback so much. He'll be critical in this game. And the second key player, Joe Logan, junior running back out of Buckeye, Arizona. He's healthy. He had one of his Biggest games of the season last week. He's multidimensional. He can run downhill. He can pass catch. He's quick and he's tough. And again, if NAU starts Gino Campiotti today, we are talking about an offense that could lean on the run all day long. And that starts with running back number 22, Joe Logan. Well, Michaela, I can smell the tailgate from here, right? I, I mean, I mean, we're getting ready. This is an exciting matchup. It's a must-win matchup. And you look at the head-to-head -head here. NAU two and two. Cal Poly one and three. Right, points per game, 25 for NAU, 22 for Cal Poly. Certainly we'll see if NAU can hold those points per game up with a possible freshman quarterback starting today. It's going to be an exciting one. Michaela. I'm excited. I can't wait for it, and happy homecoming. Happy homecoming. Happy homecoming to everyone out there. Mitch Stroman has the call coming up next.